Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Simon and welcome to another episode of Better Call Saul. Uh, episode number 5, we will be halfway through the season by the end of this episode. Really enjoyed the last one, um, the whole scheme to kind of pull off that PR stunt. Not just from the fact that, you know, he's been proven to have done it before with the fake Rolex uh, scam, but also just from the elaborate kind of plan that he had. Not knowing exactly if it was from the very beginning that he had that plan, but definitely the way it progressed and, you know, the fact that he saw an opportunity to uh, to do exactly what he did. It was great, you know, and, and it not only got him a lot of PR, it made him look like a hero. Um, it also managed to kind of really piss off the competition. You know, we've been building up this kind of rivalry with this big law firm and, uh, he not only managed to swoop in and get a massive PR boost off of, let's face it, their, their own work, their logo. He also managed to make them look quite silly. You know, he, he did. I think that's exactly why they're so pissed is because he did all that based off of their logo, their their sort of copyrighted material. And uh, I just, I just really enjoyed it. You know, it showed you how smart he is. I think this is one thing the show is really building on is the fact that yes. He has questionable morals. He makes some questionable decisions. Uh, you know, perhaps not always the the best things, but he has one a good heart. You know, he does really care about innocent people. Cares about kids. Doesn't really want anyone to get hurt. But he's smart. He knows exactly what he needs to do. It's just sometimes it either doesn't go his way because it's a bad break, or you know, he just finds himself in over his head. He doesn't have the resources that he needs. And, uh, you know, it's clear why he has the success that he does later down the line. Um, though, again, I think Breaking Bad is a great example of him getting in over his head with Walt, you know, and that's why he ends up where he does. Um, but again, we're continuing to build on some of these personal relationships with uh, Kim. Chuck now knows that he's lied to him. Uh, although it did get Chuck out the house, which I was very, very happy to see. I don't know if that's going to... It's going to go one of two ways. It's either going to make his condition even worse and keep him further inside. Or it's going to, you know, kind of be that foot in the door to get him back onto the road to heal. Because he might now not only have been outside and, you know, yes, obviously it wasn't a pleasant experience for him. But having been out there, he might, you know, he might realize, well, that wasn't so bad. And also, you know, the idea that Jimmy is out there on his own doing these things, Chuck might finally think, I need to get out there to save him from himself, you know. So who knows? That's going to be an interesting point. But uh, yes, we're going to jump in, see what happens next. So let's watch episode five of Better Call Saul. Is she going to phone the police? I'm assuming his neighbours must have some idea that he's a bit of a weirdo. She called the police. And I say weirdo from their perspective, not from mine. Oh, I've, I've just realised the police are going to have their radios. They're going to have, you know, a lot of equipment that is electrical. How's he going to respond to that? Did your neighbour consent to sell you her paper? It's, this is like so petty, but you know, it isn't, it is the law. Um, officer, let's, let's, let's talk about something called probable cause. As I'm sure you know, in the state of New Mexico, there is a two part test to determine <laughs> whether police officers have an objectively reasonable basis. He surely can't break in. Like, this is the thing for me is that again, like, there's no need for this. He's having a peaceful conversation. And this guy's trying to get into the house from behind. I mean, yeah, they're going to see that and think that's suspicious. Oh, they're going to think he's making... Yeah. coming out or are we going in? They don't have a warrant to break in. Surely that's not legal. Oh, that doesn't sound. Definitely, definitely no I can't emphasize that enough. That's definitely not going to sound dodgy. And they pull out the tasers. Again, it's just a good example of like 
the police overstepping their bounds. Like, they had no right to break in. If they think he's doing something wrong, they've got to go and get a warrant, surely. And inside the second, you believe in the real America. Freedom, oh, God. Self-sufficiency. This guy's got Republican written all over him. Really do. You know, we are once again at a point in our history <laughs> where the fly swatting hand of government is crushing <sighs> the spirit of entrepreneurship. Here we go. Taxes, OSHA requirements. This guy seems to have done all right for himself, doesn't he? He's poking their big you know? fat nose into every mother loving heart. Against the big government's wishes, apparently. Damned oppressive. The hell with our. I want you on retainer. How about oh. one million even? Five hundred up front. Okay, that's five hundred when we're done. I get the feeling he's million. <laughs> he's desperately trying not to poker face. Would you like that in cash? Yeah. He just happens to have half a million lying around in cash in his home. I don't know, maybe being a Republican pays off. Maybe I'd, I've got it all wrong. Maybe I need to go and get myself a hunting rifle. It's, it's on a tray. <laughs> like being served a fine hors d'oeuvre. No contract or anything. He's just like, there you go. Oh, no. That's the catch. Tax free and backed by the full faith and credit of the sovereign Sandia Republic. I thought it was too good to be true. It's, uh... it's a toilet. Man, what I may genius. Have seen one of these before. Oh yeah. That's the way. Uh gosh, you're big. You're so big. No. My goodness. No. Look at Nope. There's definitely someone with a fetish that needs to be. Yeah. Chandler's my youngest. Loves it. That that needs to be investigated. Give it to me, Chandler. I want it all. You're completely disgusting. You know that? Hey, buddy, you're the one with the sex toilet. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I no, mean, the sex forces. toilet yeah, aimed at kids. Yeah, aimed at his kids. It's even worse than that. Uh, he's got to find something decent, surely. I get the feeling it's going to be something small that's going to really be the good, the, the, the gem. I watched my grandmother at the end. It's... It's awful what people have to deal with. Insurance companies, my scumbag cousin stealing her savings and her payments. Mm -hmm. So it's a morally righteous thing to do, which he would enjoy, but I don't think it would be the most financially rewarding, which is also what he enjoys. What the hell kind of torture chamber you run in here? He, he's allergic to electricity. You heard the right? doc. Get down now. He's allergic he's to electricity. Come on down no, now. Don't touch me. He is this patient's brother, please. In my opinion, Charles should be committed for 30 days of psychiatric observation. Yeah, it is definitely mental. Memory, you can submit a petition for it, it, it's evaluation. something he needs to... There's an excellent facility in yeah. Los Cruces. You can he it. needs medication. Tomorrow. Must have been almost two years. Two years? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a long time. To but he's never been to see... Oh, there it is. ...a clinician? You think I'm crazy? I never said that. Also, no, apologies for being here banging. They decide to start road work as soon as I'm recording. You, how do you meet the needs of daily life? What do you do for light? How do you prepare for gas lamp? I use white gas lanterns uh, for cooking. I have a camp stove. I have oh, a large she's turning things on. With ice. This is again to prove it's whether it is actually the devices. Because again, he needs to know that they're on. Would you mind if I? Took a moment to speak with your brother. Or others. And he is. Coleman Lanterns indoors, a camp stove. 
he could burn his house down or the entire mm, that's a bit of a stretch a commitment of 10 to 20 years that is a that is a stretch if, i mean you're just, just as likely to burn yourself down being him? drunk you know trying to make a fry up you have the power to help your brother truly i mean i agree that he does need psychotherapy you know and he <laughs> jimmy is enabling him but you know i thought i'd wait till you got here uh, great how's he doing better resting good God, why is he dressed like he's been golfing it's like know. every look they give him just makes him look like a douche will not sign off on any commitment papers this is a physical condition not a mental one chuck is of sound mind i think we can all agree on that <laughs> peach howard huh of course you don't want Chuck committed. No, I don't. Because then that would sign over his decisions I to Jimmy. Guardian, yeah. And I cash him out of yeah. So just, oh, there yeah, gives him a bit of motivation. Yeah, you know, the tanning bed must have melted your brain if you think for one second. Guys, Chuck. Jimmy, wait a second. Listen, I agree that Chuck needs help, and maybe it's the right thing to do, but you can't do it like this. Yeah. He's not doing it for See, Chuck's health. He's doing sweat. it because so it earns him the money. Up. Taking my brother home. It is pretty amazing how the human mind can conjure all of these symptoms based off of stress, trauma, whatever it might be. You know, make you feel physical pain from something that isn't painful. I didn't get sick because I read about you in the paper. I got sick because I went. This is starting to make a bit more sense now. I'm too tired for this argument. Jimmy. It could be all linked to his concern for Jimmy. You think this is the return of Slip and Jimmy, but mm. it's not. And I'm going to give them the best representation I know how to provide. I'm on the up and up. Okay, I will be good. Mm. Slip and Jimmy, he's back in Cicero, I mean, dead and buried. Hindsight 2020 and all. We know that's not true. But it makes me wonder, does he slip off the path okay. after something happens to Chuck, maybe? We'll see. Oh, there you go. He doesn't need the uh, space blanket anymore. Someone's going to make that coffee. It is definitely tied into his concern for Jimmy. <laughs> That's very clever. That's very clever advertising, to be fair. Oh, wow. Like, an angel in white coming to claim their mortal soul. The rules for parking validation are actually pretty simple. Most people get it on the first <laughs> Well, you'll be pleased to know I have the requisite stickers. Being ver very deliberately slow in this... Uh, this portion of the story. You know? And again, it, it harkens back to, I guess, the very beginning of the first episode where they took their time introducing Jimmy or Saul. Oh dear. What's this all about? So, um, yeah, firstly, apologies if you hear a banging or a construction sound outside. For whatever reason, they just decided to suddenly start with this really annoying, constant banging sound, doing some construction work outside, just just when I am happen to be reacting, you know, appreciate that. Um, trying to remember, I definitely recognise that, I'm going to presume he's a detective. I remember him from being an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, playing one of the, the Doctors. I'm trying to remember if he was in the original Breaking Bad, though. And this is kind of like a moment where they're connecting together. I'm guessing that maybe that's an old partner of his from back when uh, Mike used to work as a detective or as a police officer. Uh, but yeah, I was wondering why they were taking so long just to build up to that kind of one moment. But this show does like to take its time with things. You know, it kind of shows you Mike's life as it is at the moment. Nothing especially interesting exciting happening you know just day in day out doing the same thing um clearly still a very 
suspicious man at this point, given the, the baseball bat being brought to the door. Um, but I like this episode. Again, very much an introspective on Chuck and confirmation that his condition is very much mental. And not even, you know, it, it, pretty much an explanation was right in the core of this episode. Jimmy's behavior and Chuck's concern for him slipping down that road is potentially what's triggered this. And we can see that he does get better when he's reassured that Jimmy's on the straight and narrow. So I, I do find it amazing, though, how, you know, the human brain can stimulate so much from just a subconscious thing. It can make you feel physical pain, physical discomfort. You know, it can it can give you heart palpitations just from something completely non-physical. Um, but it's good to actually just get a bit of an inkling as to what it was, because I couldn't, for the life of me, I couldn't think of any real life condition that would be physical that would mean that, you know, electromagnetic radiation would affect you on such a level. And I, I did think to myself at one point, well, he's surely got to know that there's something electric in the room near him for it to be effective. So the doctor's test, as it were, was was very uh, clever and a confirmation of exactly what it was. I also like the conversation outside, um, you know, where Jimmy puts on this sort of act to make, uh, and basically to confirm his suspicions that the only reason um, that, I forget the name of the lawyer now, not Kim, the other guy, uh, the only reason he's concerned for Chuck is because he's concerned about Jimmy taking over his, you know, business and then being able to cash out, you know, and then he, he portrays himself in a way that makes it look as though he's doing He's going to commit him because that's what he wants to do. But actually, you know, it was it was a bit of reverse psychology. Very clever. Again, I, I think in these first five episodes, it has definitely shown us so much of the good of Jimmy. You know, his his intelligence, his charisma, his wit, um, you know, his his just hard working attitude. There's so many things he's got going for him. And you know, it's just it's just a shame that he has this tendency to um to want to be successful given any cost. And and right now that's kind of a very subtle personality trait, but I think as time goes on, we'll start to see that come out more and more as he finds more and more success in illicit goings on. We'll start to see that side of him come out more and more. And I get the feeling that, you know, something might happen to Chuck that will really send Jimmy over the edge. And push him to be that person that we see many years later in Be uh, Breaking Bad. Um, but again, this episode was just really good at giving us that kind of insight into, you know, not just Jimmy himself, you know, but Chuck as well. Um, you know, and again, the, the craziness of the stories, the guy who wants to secede. And you think, a million books, wow, that's amazing. And then you start to see the game. He presents him with his own money. And it's like, mm, there we go. I kind of thought it'd be too good to be true. Um, you know, and, and then the guy with the toilet, I was like, yeah, d this dude needs to be searched. There's something not right there. There's really something not right. Um, and then the sweet old lady, you know, that, you know, was ironically the most successful venture that he had. Um, but I love it. I love it when it does that kind of um, subverting your expectations kind of thing on a small level, you know, on, on a comical level. Because, you know, that's, it's it's like, oh, things are picking up. Actually, it's not. It's all the crazies and all of the weirdos that are phoning him. So I, I like that. Um, but yeah, we'll move on to the next episode. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I will see you for the next one.